Hi, and welcome back to Ask a Pennsylvania Dutchman. My name is Chris LaRose, and this here is Douglas Maidenford. Yeah, this is. Fish hey, I, he's been, he's been simply good. He's pretty good. Yeah. Well, do you have any thoughts, particular musings on the world? No. Yeah. Do you? No. Well, what are we going to talk about? Oh, I don't know. Nobody sent us a question. <clears throat> we're running, we're running low on the bank there. There's got to be something floating around up there in your head. Well, you know, I was wondering. <laughs> See, here we go. I knew it. So, I was I was walking through the grocery store the other day. Yeah. And everywhere I looked, everything had these little emblems on it. It was non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free. There's the list goes yeah. as long as my arm. Oh yeah. And so I was thinking. Uh huh. I don't know if I could do that. All the vegan, non-GMO, or well, I don't like GMOs, but like, you know, the vegan, gluten-free stuff. What do you mean you couldn't do it? Well, I feel like my my Pennsylvania Dutchness won't allow me. If I switched over to vegan yeah. and gluten-free, could I still be a Dutchman? <laughs> Holy God. Because what? so much of us has to do with... Well, I think... Oh, time on. Now, time on. We got to make a delineation here. For a lot of people... Vegetarianism and veganism is a is a choice, mm -hmm. right? I'm for whatever reason they're choosing to to eat that style of diet. But people like gluten free, that might be an allergy which mm -hmm. they have no control over, or yeah. like dairy free because of lactose intolerance. I think we got to make that difference. I, I I know where you're coming from, and I want to hear your argument here. But just so that we we're not lumping all these people into like they're <laughs> choosing to do this. Some people are, but not all. Like my wife, my wife can't eat. She has a she has gluten issues, and if she eats gluten, she gets sick. So she's losing her Dutchness. No, well, boy, that's a. I, have to, yeah. Go, I want to hear your argument on this. I don't have one yet, so let me work. You, guys, you, <laughs> you were walking through the grocery store. And that's all you thought of. I know you well, better I than was, this. I, I know your thinking, brain went somewhere. I was thinking if I had to switch to vegan and gluten free, and there's no more red beet eggs, there's no more pretzels. There's no more cheese. There's no more sausage. There's no leptin bologna. All of that stuff. What is okay, what's no, left for me to right, do? Okay, time on. Now this is a, this is a point. We maybe people are gonna argue with us on, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say we as Pennsylvania. This is this is gonna be controversial. Uh -oh. But we as Pennsylvania Dutch people aren't solely defined by what we eat. What about that phrase? You are what you eat. Yeah, I know, but do no better. There's a lot. Okay. Uh oh. We got them feisty. We got them feisty. Listen, we did it. A big part of our culture is our food. Mm -hmm. No question about it. And you're right. The Pennsylvania Dutch diet, traditional diet, is not very friendly <laughs> to people with gluten allergies, people that are lactose intolerant. And if you're weakened or vegetarian, buddy, you might have a hard time finding something to eat at a Pennsylvania Dutch table. Mm -hmm. So, the question becomes, we have always been able to survive. Can our food ways survive, given that this is a <coughs> growing trend in America? Because mm -hmm. there are people with more food allergies, and there are more people that are consciously making the decision to go vegetarian or vegan for whatever reason they want to, and that's fine, I don't care. But... Your quest, your 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 point is well. If you're not eating those things, then you're not as Pennsylvania Dutch. Well, no, no. I, I have I have reasons, Doug. Okay. Oh boy. Are you ready? Because we have viewers. Are, I understand. We have fans out there, and I care about those ones. Those fans. Well, not those don't, viewers. Okay. But what I'm saying is the PA Dutch. So much of their way of life has been wrapped up in a, a derivative of creating this food. Growing the animals, growing the the, the, the vegetables, the vegetables, yeah. doing all this stuff, hand yeah. canning it, hand processing, butchering, making all that, cheese, making, making all sausage. of this. Yeah. Their entire way of life was about surviving and cr creating this food and to survive, to survive, yeah. and to spread to the community okay. and make it through the winter. Okay. And if you look at when you lose cultures and you lose languages throughout history. One of the last, the first things to go is the language. Correct. And the last thing to go is the diet, is the, the food. food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. why 
in my opinion, you see a lot of people sending in questions about the food stuff because to them it might be one of the last things that keeps them in touch. Or the, the thing that they have the, the thing they have the strongest connection with. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah, you yeah, removed yeah. the the traditional foods but, from the culture, what is left of them? But we're not removing them. But I'm just a but we're not re here. but but we are removing them. There are still people that aren't in these boats mm -hmm. and. The food market has come a long way. You can get gluten-free pretzels. My, my wife's gluten-free. I think I said that already. But by, not by choice, but because of a food allergy. And I'm going to tell you what. I do all the cooking in my house. Because I love to cook. He and made me some eggs I and made you this breakfast morning. this morning. Good. One of the hardest things for me was adapting to my wife's new diet. Because, and, and again, it's because of allergies. Gluten allergies, and she also is having issues with dairy right now. So you think about what I'm used to cooking and what I am used to eating and what I love to eat and love to cook, but now I'm learning to adapt. But I'm not giving up all the other stuff. It's still there. It's just sometimes if I make a dish, I have to keep in, 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 in mind, well, I'm going to have to do this dish this way so that my wife can enjoy it. And maybe I make it a little different than from me and my kids. Yeah, but you're not the one that's giving it up, though. So you still but yeah, have but I don't it think in these your other I don't think these other people are giving it up either. And I'll, show, I'll give you a good reason. Another example, a good friend of mine and a good friend of the channel, I'm not going to name the name. I'm curious. Is, Whisper it is vegetarian. Vegetarian or <coughs> vegan, one of the two. And this person reached out to me a while ago and said she, they had found oh. they had found vegetarian scrapple. Now nah, I know. I tried it. Here's I'll all. Try but, it. but see, here you go. That's the point. You just said I'd try it. That goes against your argument. No, it doesn't. I'm allowed Time to out. try anyway, stuff. Okay, okay, okay. I can still believe that you got to hold on to the foods and the language and all that stuff, but still try new things. What the heck? You just started this video by saying we're going to lose it you if you don't have down, it. You need Doug. You're getting all wrapped up. Worked so, up over okay, so you're not a purist in the sense that if there is, because there's going to be people out there, vegetarian scrapple, that's not scrapple. Well, I'm just a curious Dutchman. I want to know how you make scrapple without the oink. If it's possible, and they're marketing that way, and and maybe it has the same spices and herbs. I don't know. I didn't try it. And, of course, it's not going to be the same thing. But maybe well, it's pretty close. Now, wait. How am no, I going to know? Wait, 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 wait. How am I going to know if we can allow that into the food what circle without trying it? we can allow it? Who's with us? Like, Pennsylvania Dutch food police out oh, there? Oh, yeah. Yep. My grandma would have words. Yeah, my grandmother would have words, too. But I don't think... you We... <laughs> This is crazy. I don't understand why we're having this conversation. I don't know. Someone with those glu with those gluten-free flour mixes that are out there right now, you could make a gluten-free uh, shoe fly pie, and it's still a shoe. It's isn't it still a shoe fly pie? Probably, yeah. That's yeah. I think now, that right? Could be. Okay, you can't eat red beet eggs if you're vegan. You can mm. eat the red beets, but you can't eat the eggs. Okay, but that doesn't make that person any less Pennsylvania Dutch. Well, now how do we make vegan? PA Dutch food. I think that is happening whether you realize it or not. I have friends on Facebook and well, on Instagram. I want to ask like, them a listen, question. Listen I want to know. You're, you're right. Those are the people we we should go. I have some friends on, on Facebook and on Instagram and social media who are chefs. Oh. And they're, in their restaurants, they like to focus or highlight Pennsylvania Dutch foods. Mm-hmm. And they also know that they have diners coming in that can't eat everything that's Pennsylvania Dutch. And they are coming up with ways of still doing our cultural uh, culinary arts, but in a way that can be adapted to those people that have dietary needs or, ch or choose to be vegan or vegetarian. If I gave you a plate of, of vegan scrapple, as crazy as that sounds, or vegetarian scrapple, and I said... Here's some scrapple. Mm. Are you just going to throw your hands up and say, that's not scrapple, I'm not eating it, throw well, it out. I said I would try it, but, but I got to be convinced. You know, I got to I gotta have someone who knows what they're doing make me some of this stuff and say, hey, this is vegan Pennsylvania And what Dutch happens, food. okay, you eat it and you like it. Now nah, If what? I like it, then it's... Then, it, then you it's give saying. it, then it gets the Pennsylvania gets the Dutch PA stamp Dutch, approval. Yep, yep. Yep, if I, if I try it and I'm like, this is pretty darn close 
to the real deal. I think we're going to call that in. But if it's real far away, I'm like, that's a different dish. It looks the same. We're calling it the same with the word vegan in front of it, but it's not the same. Then you got to say, nope, it's not the same. It's not, it's not in. Maybe you could have... Why that. can't it be in? Usually I'm Tradition the, usually, I was just going to say, usually I'm the traditionalist on this channel, but right are now, you, well, I, you? I guess not, by your definition. I don't know, Doug, you're pretty darn modern. Listen, this, look at this I'm guy. telling you, if, if my wife was here right now, she'd be the first one to tell you that when it comes to certain things, traditional things, Doug Maidenford don't, he doesn't move an inch. Like what? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head, mm. but a lot of things. And I'm telling you, I had a little bit of an existential crisis when my wife got these test results back a while ago saying that she couldn't, she, she has to avoid eating some of these things because my mind went right to, what am I going to, what are we going to eat? We can't eat, we can't eat the foods that I know that I love, mm -hmm. but I've learned to be able to work with it, showing the adaptability of the Pennsylvania Dutch. Even though we say we're a stubborn, set-in-our-way people, we also are very adaptable when needed to be. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to try vegan scrapple. I want to see what it's all about. There's vegan sausage out there, too. I'd try one of them, too. But then think about it. you put it in, But there's though? so how many. You, how do you case it? That's... Well, they have those synthetic casings. Synthetics? Well, of course. Oh. A lot of your sausage comes in that, I don't buddy. like that. Uh, but think about how many of our foods I are. I have a lot of things think to complain about. Think about how many now. of our foods are vegan friendly and vegetarian friendly and gluten free. Sauerkraut, for mm -hmm. example. That's a good all one. of our pickled vegetables yep. that we make. Cha cha. cha. Right, all these things. Those are all gluten free, vegan, uh, vegetarian friendly. Well, see, then you can be a vegan PA Dutch person and not have to add anything new. It's perfect. We're stubborn. We already had it covered 100 years ago. We maybe we were, yeah, we knew this was coming mm -hmm. in our forefathers. Yep, <laughs> that's some serious forethought. PA Dutch planning there. We had we had the vegan. This concepts. is a great. This is I'm gonna throw this question <laughs> Figure out. It out. This is this is a great question to our viewers. If you are vegan or vegetarian or gluten free or dairy free, tell us about it. How are you still enjoying Pennsylvania Dutch food? given your dietary choices or because of allergies or so forth, what Pennsylvania Dutch foods do you love that you can keep eating? And to break the hearts a little bit, what foods do you miss the most? Oh, that's going to yeah. make me cry. But I'd love to see that and hear that conversation because I think if we have these people communicating with each other, so somebody that was gluten-free now all of a sudden who always loved chew fly pie but think to themselves i can't eat chew fly any i can't eat chew fly pie anymore but there's somebody out there that's learned a recipe for gluten-free chew fly pie they can match up meet up send a recipe and off you go mm -hmm. <clears throat> sounds good yep bringing people together you started out divisive no I you didn't. had the vegans you and the vegetarians on that. Side. i was presenting a question before we figured it out, that's what this channel's about, Doug. Don't yeah. you get that divisive <laughs> nonsense with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good conversation. Woo! Good, good question. We got some deep videos coming. You need out. to go to the grocery store more often. It sounds like that's where you do your your deepest thinking. Uh, I haven't done it in a long time, Doug. It's the first time in a while. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Hey. Let seriously put your comments down in the section down mm -hmm. below. Keep yep. the conversation flowing. Yep, yep. All right. Faramsai. Well, you heard it from the Dutchman. That's right. And until next time. Wait, wait. Uh, what? If you have a question, if you got, you got, got a emails, question, got why emails. you got to email? That's right. That's right. BusterPAYahoo.com. That's right. That's right. That's yep. right. Yep. Yep. We good? Oh yeah. We're All good. right. <laughs> you heard it from the Dutchman. Yep. And until next time, Mach's good. Why, if you have a question, you have to email us at bustrpa at yahoo.com.